Well, it's certainly a fine day for it. Hello everyone, my name is Brian and welcome back to Bally Spring. So we are just getting ready to go at our silage here. Uh, I'm just after being up to Brophy's there to collect a cover for the pit. And uh, yeah, we are pretty much ready to get cracking. Uh, our wagon did arrive last night and all looks good with it, thankfully. Uh, it was the same driver on the lorry and he was reluctant to pull into that uh, field again because he had such problems getting out the last time. So uh, I ended up having to actually unload him on the road. But uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think he was there a bit too happy. But oh, he'll be alright, he'll get over it. Uh, we got our wagon here anyway and that is the main thing. Now... I'll get us stopped off here and we'll jump out. So, yeah, like I said, uh, the wagon got delivered and we are basically ready to go. We have our international is going to be pulling our wagon today, and as you can see, the 675 has the book rake on the back. Um, that's going to be doing our pushing and our rolling here today. It's going to be a little bit of a new experience for me, to be honest. Uh, Usually I've I've only ever done compacting when I was on a, a big load, loader and uh, yeah it's definitely going to be a new process with this uh, but sure look we'll tip away at it and we can only do our best and see what way it goes but uh, this is our wagon anyway as you can see it is an old crone it is a, a turbo 3500 and uh, yeah it looks a nice machine it looks a, a pretty big yoke sitting there compared to the trailer but it actually doesn't hold that much more grass and um, you know the grass is definitely bulkier going into these in the first place so probably doesn't actually hold that much more in terms of weight but uh yeah reasonably happy with it she obviously has a few marks and scratches and scrapes on her and whatever but yeah i gave it a quick look over i ran it in the yard here last night and i grabbed a few handfuls of material and just threw it into the pickup and well everything seemed to be going through it all right so We'll see how we get on this morning. This morning will be the real test and he's going to be a, a trial by fire for us. But sure, fingers crossed, hopefully everything goes okay. So, with that said, it is uh, time to get cracking on here because, uh, well, we're going to have a long day ahead of us today. It is uh, to get hot here today as well. And a uh, great day to be in a glass cab with no air conditioning. So, we'll get that window open first and foremost but uh yeah we'll get on out to the field and uh, make a start on this and like i said fingers crossed now everything is going to go okay kevin's cattle are all looking happy they've grazed well off that field already but uh, uh i'll do love having them around the place now we're going to start with this field because uh, we will be trekking through this field collecting our other grass as well so Right, we'll get our PTO on and we'll make sure our pickup is going up and down okay here. Uh, right, okay, so we'll start pulling onto our row and we'll take it nice and handy. I do hope this international is uh, going to do all right pulling this load, but uh, we'll see how it gets on. Like I said, we'll just take it nice and handy here for a minute. She seems to be picking up okay anyway. I just want to jump out here and just have a quick look. Just to make sure everything does look to be going in okay. Yeah, she's thrown it into the box. Yeah, it does look a, it does look a big thing in person alright, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, let's get on and see how it goes. So, Kevin was uh, actually down here this morning, he was down here about half eight, he was down just to feed the cattle and, uh, you know, he gives them a little bit of meal and obviously he has to check on them there daily and just make sure everything is alright with him, but uh, he walked over to me and I was just blowing out the radiator on the 675, I said, you know, I'd give it a clean because with the hot weather here and it's going to be a dusty job, you know, the chances of fire greatly increases um you know especially with all their machinery so that's something you have to keep on top of but uh kevin came over to me and he says to me what in the name of jesus he says is going on down here at all he says um 
where did this y'all come from pointing to the wagon and he says I was down here the other day he said and you had a, a harvester and a, a trader he says where are they gone to I think we're probably starting to get pretty full here I'm sort of judging it by weight um, in terms of how the international is pulling but uh, we'll see we'll keep going another little bit here and see how we go but uh yeah, I uh, said to Kevin, God, this is Kevin, it's a long story, this is now to be fair. Get our pick up on, I think we're uh, pretty good there now in terms of load, I don't know if we're quite full, but uh, the international is feeling it, and I don't want to overload it on our first load as well, just to, until we see how we get on. I have to be careful coming down this hill, because uh, you can certainly feel the load pushing it there already. But... Uh, I said to Kevin anyway, I says to him, God, Kevin, I says, this is a long story, but I started telling him what the crack was anyway, and when I got to the part about Greenlands, he says to me, he says, Greenlands, he says, wasn't Taylor's, was it? And I says to him, it was, and he says, oh, God, love you, he says, and I says to him, why, I said, you've had dealings with him? Oh, he says, I've had dealings with him, all right. He says, that lad, he says, he's not only the two ends and the middle of a prick, he says. And I says, all right. I says, I think you didn't have a good experience with him, so. And he's, he started telling me anyway. Apparently here a few years back, and it was a few years ago now, but uh, he was looking to buy a new tractor at the time. And your man had this little McCormick XC80 down there. And Kevin saw it anyway and thought it was a nice enough little tractor and uh, went about buying it. And uh, let's see how this fares now. Pulled out, we don't want to dump it too far. Mm, she seems to be unloading all right. Okay, let me just jump out and have a quick look at that side because I just want to see what it's looking like yeah that's looking pretty good now pretty good we could have kept it further back to the pit but that's what the book rake is there for <laughs> we'll be uh, raking probably we'll probably try and drop off three to four loads here and we'll start on our rake and then at that stage uh, we'll have to keep on top of the rake and of course as we're going through it but uh, we should get away with putting in a few loads first before we have to make a start at it but uh, anyway Kevin he was telling me that he bought this little McCormick off him and uh, just trying to think where we'll go I think we'll go back up where we were we must have missed a little bit here so we'll start on that but uh, yeah he bought this little McCormick off him and uh, he said it got delivered down to him and uh, one of the boys took it off the low loader for him and he said it was parked up in the yard anyway and your man was only after heading off with the truck when uh, Kevin said he'd go out and you know try it out so he went out and he jumped into the tractor anyway and next thing he went about moving it and she was in the low box so he was pressing the button on it trying to get it to go back into the high and uh, was getting no luck with it and you know he wasn't sure whether he was doing something wrong or whether it was a problem but he ended up ringing your man anyway and Taylor's and said to him you know couldn't get this tractor up into high gear and your man sort of walked him through the process and no he still wasn't having any good with it so your man said he was going to have to get it back and have to get a look at it and so he ended up having to ring your man in the truck get your man in the truck to turn around and come back and uh, they picked it up and took it on and Kevin said he had it there for about two weeks he said before he eventually got it back down to him and he said he got it back down to him anyway and he says he went to take it off the low loader himself this time and he said everything seemed alright he said it was in high gear and all and uh, he said he might just test it he said though you know before he let your man go so he uh went anyway and he got god i missed another little bit and I'm, I'm scrappy i must be getting rusty but uh he went and tested it around the yard a little bit and uh, just tried to drive it on and put it back down into the low box and went to change back into high and uh, he could get no good of it again she was stuck in low again 
So, as you can imagine, he was never a bit too happy, but uh, it put, ended up putting it back onto the law order and sent it back up to him again. And he said, it was waiting for about another week, he said, and uh, next thing, your man rang him and your man says, oh, it's sorted now this time. He said, she's 100% now, she's ready to go. I promise you now, you'll have no more problems with it. So he got your man back down on the truck, dropped it off again, and Kevin said, in fairness, everything seemed bang on now this time. He said she was swapping between gears, no problem at all. He said everything seemed to be fine. And he had it there for a few days, and he was after being spreading a bit of fertilizer and doing a little bit of spraying with it. But it was only a few days later, he went to actually try and pick up a trailer with it. And when he went to try and pick up the trailer, I think we're just about full there again because uh, yeah she's definitely feeling full so we'll head on back down but uh, when he went to pick up the trailer he couldn't get the hitch ton catch and so he ended up having to ring your man in Taylor's again and this time he sent out a lad to look at it your man could get no good of it and said it was going to have to go back up with him so back on up to the workshop again he said it was there for about four or five days and he said he'd been trying to get through to him trying to find out you know what was the crack with it or what was going on and he said every day he rang he said the person on the desk could tell him oh your man wasn't there today he was away or whatever and kevin thought there was something going on you know but uh, he tried him again anyway another few days and still he could get no reply out of this lad and kevin was getting fairly thick so what he done was he ended up get jumping into the jeep and driving up to him and uh, I think we want to keep over maybe another little bit but uh, he drove a hop and he brought the logbook of the tractor with him and he dumped it back to him and <laughs> said to him he wanted to get his money back so he ended up not buying off him at all he ended up not keeping the little McCormick he went on and got something else he said but uh, apparently this lad he must have a little bit of a reputation if, uh, you know, this is a common crack, like, you know, obviously, I'm not the only lad to have had a bad experience with him here, so, yeah, I, I think uh, no matter what way this crone works out, and, like, we can't complain here too much, she's doing a decent job so far, anyway, and touch wood, she stays going this way, but, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be back to home to shop again, and, you know, if any is around that area, I tell you to stay well clear of them as well. see here we are now as you can see we're moved on to rolling and let me tell you we're going to roll more grass than snoop dog here bloody today we are but uh no this is an important part of the process of course we need to get this rolled and keep it rolled in between loads because uh that is going to affect how fermentation takes place you know Basically our uh, silage pit here, it's basically like a big sponge, if you want to think of it that way. If you take a sponge in front of you and you place your hand down on it, and you're basically going to press all the air out of it. And that is essentially what we're trying to do here by rolling back and forward with our tractor like this. Ideally you want, want an even bigger, heavier machine for doing this job, but it is what it is, and uh, we'll just have to do the best with what we have. But, of course, the problem is, um, once you take your hand up off that sponge, all the air is going to go rushing back into it. And it is a similar story with our grass. You know, this is why I said ideally you would want a second person doing this job here all day while the other person is cutting. But, like I said, we're just going to make the best with what we can do. We rolled after four loads, and we've had another three go in there now since. So we've had seven loads in in total at this point. And so, yeah, we're just trying to keep it as well compacted down as we can. But, uh, yeah, the silage is going to work the same. Essentially, once we stop rolling, it's going to try and suck back in as much air as it possibly can. And we, of course, want to prevent that from happening. So, as soon as we finish up here this evening and we get our last loads gone in, we'll spend maybe 90 minutes, if not maybe nearly two hours probably rolling it, and 
then we'll get our uh, our covers on and get all our tires on to get some weight on it to make sure we have a nice quality airtight seal you know because uh, like I said it is it's an important part of the process uh, you have to make sure this is done correctly if you want your grass to ferment right for you and uh, we definitely do of course it is uh, not the only aspect when it comes to making sure that fermentation takes place correctly there are definitely other aspects to it uh, we've talked about a few of them already in a previous episode we talked about you know how we test for moisture content within our hay and we do the same for our grass here obviously we're going to have a little bit higher moisture in our grass it goes into the pit relatively wet uh, compared with our, what our hay would be being harvested at but uh, we also test for things like our nitrate levels and our sugar levels which I mentioned when we were down with Don uh, the last day and the two of those are big determining factors in what sort of quality silage we are going to end up having at the end of all this so essentially before we cut down we want to make sure that all of our nitrogen is going to be basically gone out of our grass now when I say all of our nitrogen there there are acceptable amounts of nitrogen that could be in it but essentially we want as much of it gone out of it as is possible the reason for that is because if you have nitrogen still within your grass that is going to prevent fermentation from ha taking place essentially and that is how you would end up with a pit full of bad or moldy field uh, which is going to be obviously no good for your cattle and is going to end out or is going to end up out on a dung heap somewhere and uh, well nobody wants that do they so how we ensure that uh, we are not going to have any nitrogen in our soil is by doing a simple little test on a ph scale basically unfortunately there is no real mathematical equation for determining when your nitrogen will actually have left your grass roughly speaking you could say that your grass uses about two units of nitrogen per day and so if for argument's sake you let's say you spread your nitrogen at a, uh, a rate of 100 units per acre you would be waiting roughly 50 days uh, to make sure that your grass is nitrogen free now that um, isn't an exact science like I mentioned there because that is dependent on a lot of factors it is dependent on things like whether it is old pasture land or whether it is pasture land that has been reseeded pretty lately um, it will depend on the fertility of the soil it will depend on the weather conditions uh, you know if you've had a long spell of hot dry weather that is going to have an effect on uh, how quickly the nitrogen leaves your grass and similarly if you had uh, a prolonged spell of wet uh, cold weather that is going to affect how long the nitrogen also stays within your grass now it is not always possible to cut your grass when it is nitrogen free and you know when I say nitrogen free there is acceptable amounts you know normally you're looking to see levels somewhere under about 500 parts per million ideally you would probably actually want to see it at even less roughly maybe under 300 parts per million you could say but if you ran into a situation where you had a long or prolonged spell of uh, cold wet weather and all of a sudden the guy on the weather forecast is telling you that the weather's going to be good next week but the week after it's going to be back with more rain well all of a sudden you know you know have a window where you need to get your grass picked up and you know if it turns out that there is a certain amount of nitrogen still stored within your grass you might just have to deal with that and you might just have to accept that some of your feed may end up bad or even moldy now there are things you can do to prevent that and a big factor in that is your sugars so essentially your sugars are what going, are going to interact with the good bacteria within your silage pit and that is what is going to start the process of fermentation happening now the higher these sugars uh, essentially the quicker fermentation can start taking place and that can basically override the negative effects of having too, many, too much nitrogen in there 
um, because if the fermentation p uh, starts taking uh, place a little bit quicker the nitrogen doesn't get time to basically adversely affect what grass has already gone into the pit. Now if you were in a situation where you had high nitrate levels but you also had low sugar levels well that would be a pretty worrying situation uh, for you to be in in the first place but there are things you could do uh, to compensate for that and that is when you would start essentially looking at additives for your silage now there are all types of additives for dealing with all types of problems but for what we're talking about here with your low sugar levels something that is uh, tried and tested would be a molasses additive because molasses molasses is of course uh, very naturally high in sugar it's also relatively cheap and so um, it can be a very good additive to get on there you know lads would normally get maybe a tanker full and they'd spread it on there in between every few loads and you know the guy on the pit stays clamping it down and working it in but uh, yeah that can basically help to compensate for any sh low sugar levels that you might see now at the end of all of this we are essentially hoping uh, to see a material in our pit with a dry matter content of about 25 to 30 percent now your dry matter content is essentially how much grass you're going to have left over um, after the water has been released from it now from that we will be able to determine our what is called our dmd rating and we are looking to get a DMD rating of about, say, between 70 to 75. That would be what we are aiming for, essentially. Now, your DMD is your dry matter digestibility rating. And essentially what that means is how much energy is stored within the grass that you have produced. And so, obviously, the more energy that's uh, stored within that grass, the better quality that silage is going to be. And, you know, if we could produce grass silage there with a DMD of, you know, 70 or 75, that would be silage that would be aimed at, you know, premium dairy cows. Um, guys who have, you know, a big dairy farm and have very high quality cows, they're going to be looking for very high quality feed. And if we're able to provide that, that means that that silage is going to be worth a little bit more money per tonne. Now, if you ended up with silage with, you know, a lower quality rating, let's just say you had something there at, that was 68 DMD, that silage would be still perfectly adequate for something, um, for something like, say, Kevin's heifers down there. You know, cattle that are first-time calvers or uh, the ones that are going to be spring calvers, that would be a perfectly acceptable level uh, of quality silage for them. If you had something that was even lower again, let's just say you had a, something with a DMD rating of 65 or even down as low as 60, that could still be a good quality feed for something like, you know, beef stock there that are, say, yearlings or wanings or something like that. But it also could be a good quality feed for something like a suckler cow because they're not going to have the same intense need uh, for a good high quality feed as something like your premium dairy cow is going to have and so while it's not going to be the end of the world if we don't produce the absolute best quality silage it will mean a knock in you know what money we can potentially earn for it and so obviously we are aiming to make the best quality silage we possibly be can because that way we are going to ensure we're going to make the biggest amount of money we possibly can. And now to stand on top of Veragil would give me such a thrill. And to see him down in Dublin said there's gold in their hills. Now don't despair cause if you dare the answer lies with me. There's a wall that's deep and she's going cheap somewhere in Germany. Oh, if I could, I'd build a wall around old Donegal. The north, the south, I'd keep my old by God, I'd build her tall. 
Casinos, chicken ranches, side leg lies them all. We'd have our own Las Vegas in the hills of Donegal. Yeah, Las Vegas in the hills of Donegal. Oh, Jesus, they're fucking York recording. There we are now, everyone. Isn't that a sight to see? That is the way you want to see your silage in the pit and covered, everything done with it, all the hardship out of the way. Yeah, we had a good yield. Um, I reckon we have somewhere around 220 tons gone in there. We had a little over 14 loads and uh, long even compacting made a little bit more bearable by the fact that my father and my brother arrived down just as I was finishing up on the compacting. They got here just in time to help me uncover the or to unroll the wrap and uh, get the cover on and drag up all them tires there in the ox as well as you can see but uh yeah i was very grateful now to see him come in i definitely wasn't gonna turn down the offer of help because uh yeah she's been a long old day now in fairness um you know it's been tough old work there too on the little crone there in fairness to her she did the right job she ran away all day and no bother on her and her little international as well she did the job pulled away all day no signs of problems with it so her little massey of course as well uh she had a hard job there stacking it all into the pit but yeah everything just went fine which is a uh, Really, really nice after all the messing around that went on here, just, ah, uh, you know, between the harvester and the trailer and having to organise to get him sent back and then getting this wagon down and hoping everything was going to be all right. It's been a little bit more hectic than probably should have been here, you know, the last few days, but, yeah, it is what it is. Um, like I said, you know, we have a good yield out of it now and hopefully we're looking at a lot of money right here and... You know, not to count chickens or anything, but we should have plus or minus 10 grand in here, I'm hoping. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be very, very important for us, so it is. But uh, much like this pit, I am very tired now. And so I'm going to take the father and the brother down to the pub here, and we're going to get a couple of points. And on that note, that is where we are going to do it for today. So, as always... Take care, good luck, and slauncha.